Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over the second part of Tangled Vines. This time we are going to be learning how to create the alpha leaves. Well, we're going to be creating the leaves and the flowers using alphas. Now remember, you guys can go to academicphoenixplus.com and go to downloads. The files are already there under images, tangled vines. Now I know it says that it's 99 cents. That's just a recommendation. If you click on the product, you will get a 100% coupon code of free tangled vines that will give you this for free. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get the party started. Actually, let's continue the party with tangled vines. So I'm gonna start off with just a regular plane. Leaf Geo is the name of the plane and I'm gonna lower my divisions because this is a little high. So maybe two by two, maybe by three, three by three. I'm gonna use this to kind of change the, the shape of the leaf a little bit. Thing I do is is going to planar map from above. So go to UVs, planar map options, and it is Y direction because Y means up and down. Make sure that keep image width height ratio is active and insert, and every, these two are active. Project. I want to take a look at my UV editor. This is the way it's going to look. I'm going to just scale it down just a little bit because I don't like it to be so close to the border. Okay, now that that's done, this is what we're going to be using to texture. All right, so let's export this. Let's go to image, UV snapshot. I'm going to use 1024. I'm going to browse. Whoops, that tells me that I did not set my project. So let me set my project file, set project, vines set. So now theoretically, I guess maybe not. Oh, well, it's trying to go somewhere else. Let's go to my vines. I'm going to be working through images. This is my leaf snapshot. And it's a TIFF. It's white. Everything looks good. Apply. Let's open up Photoshop. Okay. Well, here's the leaves. And anything inside the space, you're going to see anything outside of it, you're not. Now, I already have a couple of tutorials about this, alpha hair and how to create leaves like a planter. So feel free to look at that if you like so that you can, you can go a little slower. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and start moving along. So I'm going to take my reference image that I grabbed and I'm going to do my best to try to snip some of these out. So for example, let me try to grab this one. I'm going to copy and paste. Oh boy, you see that? That's feathering. Let me go back to this. It's got feathering of 30. That must have been from a previous project. I'm going to try that again. Copy, paste. I'm going to put one up here. Might be easier to grab it with this one, so just make a selection like so. Gonna try my best. There's not much wiggle room here. Bump. Close. Let's see. I think that's okay. Copy. Paste. That's so cute. Okay, next. Um, hmm. Oh, what the heck? I'll just make one that's really big. Make sure you have everything you need. At least do the best that you can. I'm going to deselect some of this. I think for the sake of the exercise, I think that was good enough. Move this down and I might shrink this a little bit. Okay, and let me grab that one too. Move it up a little bit. This one as well. So I'm just kind of placing them and trying to give them a little bit of space. Whoops. So that um, I can later on cut the geometry. Okay, that looks pretty good. Already deleted the alphas, but what we want to do is make alphas of this. So I'm going to click this, this, and this channels and make an alpha. There we go. And I want to get rid of my... Now since we're using alphas, 
the background should try to be something similar to the color. So when you zoom away, it will not pick up darkness. It will pick up some of this nice color. So let's grab some of this color and fill the background. Let's try that again. There we go. So I might want to grab maybe even this color over here and just want to make sure that something like that. Try to make it more a little nicer. This doesn't matter really. You're not going to see it, but at least this looks nicer compared to what it was. So, okay. So this is my, I'm going to save as I always save. This is my leaf CLR. It's a Photoshop right now, but I am going to save this as I'm going to flatten this. I'm going to save it as a TIFF. I am going to place it in my source images and I'm going to keep the alpha map. Okay, let's go back. We're using the Arnold AI standard. So assign a new material, Arnold. Let's go to the standard surface. Net delete the history, edit, delete by type history. Here it is. Leaf. Actually, this is flower, flower. Ooh, <laughs> I got ahead of myself. This is gonna be flowers, flower. Okay, uh, let's go back to the attributes and let's plug in the color. So we're gonna go to color, file, go to the little folder and there it is. Press six and notice that there's no transparency. The transparency is attached to the alpha of the image. So let's connect it. Let's go to the hyper shade and we're going to right click on our flower here and go to graph network. So here's our flower. You can see the UVs and it does have an out alpha. So what we want to do is connect our out alpha to our opacity. Now notice that it went dark. So there is an opacity RGB and it gives you a warning. So we can go to um, our out alpha and plug it into, let's say the R. I know it looks really busy right now, but you know, it's got one, two, three. It's got a lot of information out here. Um, well, let's see what we get. So let's render it out and we're probably not going to see anything because there's no light. So let's create a light directional light for now. We'll get fancier in a little bit. So I'm missing a step. Let's select the geometry. We need to go to our Arnold and turn off opaque. That's very important. Let's go ahead and render that. Okay, so it's giving me the R, so that means that it's not really reading it. Out alpha to R, G, and B. Let's see what that happens. There you go. So now we have a couple of flowers, and it might make sense if we rotate it so you can see the difference, but there you go, you've got your little flowers. Uh, the only thing we had to do is make sure that in the hypershade, we grabbed our out alpha and connected it to the RGB. All right. So now that that's going, the next thing we need to do is just, let's go to uh, shift insert edge loop tool. I'm going to make a cut here. I'm going to make a cut right here. Then I'm going to select my faces and deselect these. There you go. Let's try that again. Faces, select this. Go to Edit Mesh, Detach, Mesh, Separate. There you go. Two steps. That's okay. All right. So now we have our cards. Let's select these. Let's modify Center Pivot. Modify five freeze transformations. Edit the lead by type history, and everything's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at it in a render. So because they got separated into multiple pieces, don't forget to turn off Opaque each individual mesh. Let's take a look at it now. There you go. Cool. And it does a shadow, which is really neat. So now it's about shaping it a little bit. I actually, I always like to shape certain things uh, on the flower just to make sure that it's got some sort of depth. Otherwise it looks a little bit weird. So just go ahead and make a couple of cuts 
and grab the edge and kind of bring it in, bring it out, you know, just kind of make it look a little bit more 3D. Maybe grab the vertices and just kind of manipulate it a little bit so that uh, it ha it looks like it's got a little bit of depth. Yep. Let's go ahead and do it for this one too. Bring this down a little bit, maybe this one up a little bit. Insert a edge in the middle. Grab a vertex and just kind of manipulate it a little bit. Some of it's down, some of it's up, whatever you like. Whatever you feel is will make your piece look better. Actually, probably this won't look better if it's down and this one look will go up. Okay. So it may not look like that much, but when you have a little bit of depth on your plant or your little flowers, they're going to look a little bit more like 3D. So same here. I'm going to put one here, here, and here. So grab my vertices and just kind of push them down a little bit. All of these guys probably need to go down just a little bit. And then you can just manipulate this so it's got a little bit of that depth. Just a little bit, just enough to fool the viewer. Okay, now that we did that, make sure you select your mesh, edit, delete by type history. We can freeze transformations, but you know. Um, okay, so we also have, need to relabel them. So I'm gonna take the time to relabel flower one. Flower two. Flower three, very fancy. Okay. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the leaf. Let's grab the leaf or grab a piece of geometry. This time we're doing a leaf. So same story, I'm just gonna reduce my mesh. Three by three. UV map, I'm gonna go faster. UV map planner options, go to object mode, edit the leaf by type. History, uh, UV snapshot, image, UV snap, 1024. This is gonna be my leaf snapshot. I think the other one should be called flower snapshot. Let me relabel that. It's my, is it gonna let me? Nope. Let me go to my file and relabel then. So again, I'm doing all this because even though I know I, it's just important to make sure that um, everything's labeled correctly. Leaf. Because again, if I hand this to a industry person, I wanna make sure that it's perfect and that it doesn't cause any issues and they can figure it out really quickly. So just think about them. Okay, I'm in my images. So images, leaf, I'm gonna grab my leaf. Oops. Control A, Control C, Control V, Control T. Okay, I'm gonna probably put just, well, I can put more than one leaf. There we go. I'm gonna grab the color, fill this, select these two so I can create an alpha. Delete this alpha and create a new alpha. Just save this as a PSD so I can use it later. Be nice. In case I need to manipulate it later on. Oh man, I did the same thing for that one. Um, I'll do CLR2 for now. All right, so let's go to my source images and save it as a TIFF with no layers. Keep the alpha. Wow, it really screwed up. So everything's called leaf and it's supposed to be flowers. Man. Oh, it can always be fixed, right everybody? It can always be fixed. Close that, close that. Got okay, this is gonna be in flower. And this is my leaf. And 
go over here to my source images. Probably gonna have to copy and paste this one and call it flower. Go back to Maya, open up the attributes and we're going to replace the leaf flower with the flower. Okay, so now everything's labeled correctly. We got the flower here. We have the flower color attached and everything is rendering correctly, which is awesome. I'm going to right click assign new material. Arnold AI standard surface. Let's click on the color. Let's go to file folder flower. Whoops, leaf color, leaf color two, which I need to replace open. And let's not forget to turn off the Arnold opaque. Boop. All right, let's render it out. Make sure it's working. It's not working because we need to connect it through the hypershade. The alpha doesn't get automatically connected. So let's right click on our standard shader, which we haven't relabeled. So this is going to be our leaf. Open up the opacity and let's grab our out alpha under R G B. Let's render it out. And there you go. Cool. Let's go in here. Shift right click, insert edge. And grab the faces. So for whatever reason, when I click detach, doesn't actually detach, but when I click separate, then it separates. So it's very interesting. It's two step process where in the past it used to be just one step, but whatever, whatever Autodesk wants. All right. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and shape it just a little bit. You can bring an edge up. Just kind of make it a little bit different. So it doesn't look like an, it's going to look like a, it's basically the exact copy, but at least you're trying to make it look a little bit different. Okay. It's always important. All right. Okay. So now we have everything ready to go. So we just have to start attaching it to our vines. So I actually like to move my pivot point to our, to the bottom of the leaf because it'll be easier to place. So I probably need to scale these up a little bit and I'm going to do a lot of V snapping. Okay. So that means V, middle mouse, and snap. And to refresh your manipulator, just hold, just press W a couple times. So make sure that these guys are facing downward. <laughs> Not sure what's happening there. Okay, so as you'll notice, when I start rotating, you can see that the geometry starts to go crazy. And I'm not sure. It's like a weird glitch that Maya has yet to fix. I was hoping in 2018 it would fix it, but it's not. Sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to show you how to get around it. You could export it as an OBJ and bring it back in, but I also figured go ahead and create a cube, select the mesh, and go to Mesh Combine, which is going to combine the geometry. Select it again, go to Mesh, Separate. And now if I modify Center the Pivot, and rotate, everything is perfect. So that's awesome. Really strange, not sure why. Same thing's gonna probably happen to this one, but uh, I'm going to create a cube, grab these two together, mesh, combine, mesh, separate. I'm gonna center that pivot and there you go. The leaf maintains the shape. Really strange, but at least there's a fix. Okay, let's go ahead and start placing them. Again, I'm moving the pivot. I'm going to snap it to, whoops, snap it over here. And I know these are supposed to be facing downward. So I'll just go ahead and start placing them. So V middle mouse and snap, and then just start placing the leaves. So there's a little bit of troubleshooting in this one. We're going to troubleshoot some more. Now we're going to go to the third part, which is continuing making the vines look more realistic, adding a little bit of lighting, and then make tweaking some items. But let me know if you have any questions. Please do not hesitate to ask. You can always leave a comment at the bottom. Subscribe if you feel these videos are helpful. And of course, like and share. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.